Good morning. Good morning. Today is Friday, May 27th, 2022. My name is Lucy Altman. I will be the moderator for this class. Please uh, continue to monitor your video and mute buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest-hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. 
Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua, the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives. They are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah and tenth to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state our watchword is peace our slogan is speak the truth uh, this morning, we will dedicate the class with a prayer by Dr. Denise Kinley, if she is available. We will have a song by Dr. Lenore Allen and a scripture lesson to be read by Dr. Leonard James. And we don't know what that is yet. Uh, it looks like it's Acts, the 12th chapter. May we have our prayer, if you're available, Dr. Uh, Kinley. Greetings, um, greetings, everyone. Um, let's bow our hearts and minds to give praise to Yahshua Messiah. As we gather here today to learn more about our Heavenly Father, may, may he continue to bless us and to enlighten us and let we unite in our heart and in our mind to learn more of him, to serve him, to continue to teach 
to teach the truth and to share the true gospel is death, burial, resurrection, ascension um, to those who know and to those, most of all, to those who don't know. May we find peace in our hearts and in our mind and to be thankful to him daily. With these few words, say, let's all say hallelujah. 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 Today I'm going to sing a song that originally was called Hallelujah. Tomorrow Belongs to Me, and it's renamed We're Blessed to Belong to L. The hope of the future is clear to be seen through the teachings of Henry Kinley. He speaks of the vision and it reveals the gospel to you and me. His vision reveals, his vision reveals the gospel to you and me. Beginning at Moses, your pattern is clear, threefold but a unity. He's king of all ages, and we will see he's king of eternity. King of each age, king of each age, king of eternity. The Lord and the prophets point to Yahshua. They tell us that he is the one. Yahweh is father entitled El, and Yahshua is his son. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Yahshua is his son. You will know our creator for that is his plan, and in his spirit we dwell. Now that we know him, we're satisfied. We're blessed to belong to El. Blessed to belong, blessed to belong. We're blessed to belong to El. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dr. James, are you uh, I'm, uh It's difficult to hear at this present moment, so could you have someone else to read the scriptures? Will do, thank you. It's a pleasure, thank you. Uh, Jackie, are you available to read? Yes, ma'am, I'm home. Okay. Acts chapter 12. Good morning. Yes, Acts chapter 12. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the assembly. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four quarterings of soldiers to keep him, intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but, prayed, but prayers were made without ceasing of the assembly unto Yahweh for him. And when Herod could have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between the two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of Yahweh came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. And the angel said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. So he did, and he said unto him, cast thy garments about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And was not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but 
thought he saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth into the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that Yahweh has sent his angel and have delivered me out of the hands of Herod and from all the expectations of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked, at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it's an angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he, beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how Yahweh had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers what, the, what was become of Peter. And when Herod had sought for him and found him not, he um, ex examined the keepers and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased and them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him and having made Bl Blastus the king, Chamberlain, their friend desired peace because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon his throne and made an orientation unto them. And the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a deity and not a man. And immediately the angel of Yahweh smote him because he gave not Yahweh the glory and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But the word of Yahweh grew and multiplied and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. That's Acts, the second chapter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, trying to remember who our scripture readers are. Uh, well, turn this back over to Dr. Lenore Allen and I'm sorry, guys. I'm just drawing a blank, blank as to who our readers are today. Wasn't Dr. Platt one? Dr. Pratt one? I don't know. Yes, I can read today. I can too. Okay, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Our readers today will be Dr. Dennis Pratt and Dr. Jackie McCain. Thank you. Okay. Turn this back over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that we were able to assemble today. I know um, from the north, the south, and the east, and the west. Good morning, um, good evening, and good afternoon. I wanted to, we're doing a 40 play chart, that's correct? Yes. Okay, and I'm supposed to do- Play resurre 35. Resurrection reconfirmed, okay. Here we go. Now, why isn't this, why can't I make this small? Okay. I'm sorry that this is kind of wonky, but we're looking at, um, this is the divine pattern 
of the universe proving the existence of Yahweh and manifesting his purpose by the physical creation through the dispensations and ages. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. I can hear you. Okay. So that's the name of the chart and it's got 40 plates on it. And this plate 35 is called resurrection reconfir reconfirmed and i'm sorry that it's kind of big um it's it's an ascending plate so it shows that yashua went through his death his burial his resurrection and the holy spirit was poured out through his sacrifice and we're seeing the same thing with peter and it's recon reconfirming that there was a resurrection from the dead and incidentally, we have an understanding of that because every day we go to bed and we are dead tired and we are buried. We always say in the covers of our bed, but even for those who don't have covers, you are buried in another world. You are, you are buried in your consciousness. If somebody came along and, and said something um to you, you 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 sometimes you don't even hear it you don't even acknowledge it because you are in another world and then early in the morning you you resurrect and as a matter of fact it's reading this book and it was talking about i don't know if it's significance i'll just pour it out maybe somebody else will see it that the way yahweh designed your body about four o'clock in the morning you get like a little um bump of sugar into your system that prepares you for your glorious um, um, resurrection. So you'll, you'll find that Yahweh has, is preparing you to resurrect from the dead. So much so that people say like, oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you're honest, many people aren't even hungry when they wake up. They've, they've gotten, you know, Yahweh's preparing you for the day. I'm not saying don't eat breakfast, but I'm saying that your body has this thing where it pumps a little bit of sugar and, into your body so that when you wake up you're ready to face today okay so we're looking at here and it's showing here that what we were reading about in um the scripture reading that uh can we start reading from the beginning please acts the 12th chapter acts the 12th chapter now about that time herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the congregation and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Okay, then, so then were the days of unleavened bread. Okay, so we're talking about it's about the time of the Passover. Sacrifices are being made. Um, a type of a, a, a lamb of Yahweh. James is, is an obedient brother. And Peter also is an obedient brother and they're being set up to be sacrificed. Could you keep reading, please? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep oh. him. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry. And standing after Passover to bring him forth to the people. Okay, so the people are very happy that um, <clears throat> these innocent lambs are being killed. And he says, okay, you like this one? I'm going to take Peter now. I'm going to put him. And what he does is subject him to four quaternions. When I looked up, well, what is a quaternion? It says four soldiers. So four of them would mean 16. 16, six and one is seven. So he had him in a perfect, you know, I guess they had, they thought they had him sealed in. He's not gonna get out of that. So that's a, a death and a burial in the prison. And uh, you gotta understand that back then, they're not worried about um, providing, uh, with, you know, proper witnesses and, and cared about your care. It's like, you're just stuck in that hole. And when it's time for you to come out, you'll come out, please keep reading. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing by the congregation unto Yahweh for him. Mm -hmm. And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers 
bound with two chains and the keepers before the door guarded the prison. And behold, the angel of Yahweh came unto him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands. Okay, so can, can you read that again from where you stopped off, please? And I'm going to interrupt you. Sorry. Okay. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Passover to bring him forth to the people. Peter, okay, there, Excuse me, what, what verse are you on? I'm sorry. Verse four. Now I'm okay. on verse five. Thank you. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing by the congregation unto Yahweh for him. So sometimes people have a question, are we allowed to pray? The people saw that there was some kind of distress and they were crying out to Yahweh and, and they prayed. And prayer goes according to Yahweh's purpose and then prayer was definitely answered. Can you keep reading, please? And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door guarded the prison and behold the angel okay, of excuse power. me so i was just looking at the sleepers there and you can also pick it up with um oh the one in the fish jonah, jonah that he was um but he was when he was in the ship when he was in the ship you know, he was pierced in the side. They kicked him and said, you know, wake up. And he was slip, sleeping in the ship. He's he's sleeping. Um, he's pierced in the side. They push him in the side. Yahshua's pierced in the side. Okay, keep reading, please. Verse 7. And behold, the angel of Yahweh came unto him, and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And his chains fell off from his hands. And the angels said unto him, gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. So, and so he did. And he saith unto him, cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he so went have a, a death, burial and a resurrection of Peter um, if you were taken by Herod, it was just assumed that you are a dead man. But Yahweh causes him to be resur resurrected in a way that Herod's got no control over this. Can you keep reading, please? Verse 9. And he went out and followed him and realized not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. Mm -hmm. When they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. Me, I'm sorry, the gate opened at its own accord, just like the Red Sea. Yeah, Yahweh said, stand still and see the salvation of Yahweh. And it just opened at its own accord, right? We, we come to a knowledge of this, um, we come in ignorant, we come out knowledgeable, this gate is taken away, this, um, what you call it, um, this wall is taken away, you, you're seeing uh, at the at the request of the spirit, the spirit opened the, um, the spirit opened the Red Sea, the spirit opened this gate right, right in front of you. And um, there's a song, uh, uh, watch y'all move, <laughs> he could just open gates, take things out of the way, things that you thought were totally impossible. He can cause it to happen. Keep reading, please. And they went out and passed on through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, now I know of a surety that Yahweh had sent his angel and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So he knew for sure that he was resurrected. Please keep reading. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Miriam, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, 
where many were gathered together praying. Mm -hmm. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken named Rhoda. Mm -hmm. And when she, when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. Now, this is what I love about this teaching, because I said, what does Rhoda mean? You know, it's like things that you would have just read over because you've been instructed. Don't just read over things. Take your time. Look this up. This is a school. Um, Rhoda means a rose. And it's just, you know, she, he comes to the door and he's knocking. I stand at the door and knock. And she opens it and it's, it's, it's a... It's an example to show forth that he rose and he's he's met by a woman whose name is Rose. It's just showing that he has had a resurrection from the dead. Um, could you read that last sentence again? Yes. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a no, could you read eleven? I'm sorry, eleven, please. Verse eleven. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, "Now I know of a surety that Yahweh had sent his angel." and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. So he knows that Yahweh has delivered him. And it goes all the way back. If you think that when Moses is sent down into Egypt, um, you know, he says, certainly I will be with thee, right? And so Peter knows certainly Yahweh is with thee is with me he's taking care of me he was he was i mean can you imagine 16 soldiers eyeballing you <laughs> you have you have no way of escape and then you just you just slip out of there it, that that's that's totally amazing so it's done in such a way that you can know if if he's with you who can be against you please keep reading from there verse 12 and when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Miriam, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to hearken, named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad but she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, it is- Wait a moment, excuse me, excuse me. I particularly love this one. Can we go to um, Luke 24 and I think it's 10. Luke 24 and 10. It was Miriam Magdalene and Joanna and Miriam, the mother of James, and others with them, which told these things unto the apostles. Uh, I wonder, and their I, words seemed to them. Uh, wait, 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 24 and 10. I want the part where it's, they, uh, they thought it was old wives tales. Okay, let me see, 25. I know it's Luke 24, is it 11? Wait a moment. Yes. And their words seem to them as auto tales. Okay, because so can you pick it up that they're telling them, hey, he's he's risen, he's gone. Okay, let me okay. see. Okay. Okay, yes, 10 and 11. All right, 10 and 11, verse 10 and 11. It was Miriam Magdalene and Joanna and Miriam, the mother of James, and others with them. Which oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please read from five. I'm sorry. Verse five, as, and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the sepulcher and told all these things unto the 11 and to all the rest. Keep reading. It was, it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Miriam, the mother of James and others with them, which told these things unto the apostles. 
Okay, so the woman is saying, hey, he's gone, he's risen. And so all the way back with, with Eve, she was the one that ate of, of the fruit. She was the one that um, uh, did not follow the words of Yahweh, don't touch it, she touched it, she ate, she was deceived. Now, now Yahweh is fulfilling, he's giving the woman a chance. She's the one that's preaching the gospel. He's risen, he's gone. And what's the reaction? And their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Okay. And then if you picked it up at I think it's 27, where it calls them fools and slow of heart to believe. 25. Verse 25. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went. And he. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing this up. But pick it up from 22. Verse 22. Yea. And certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. Keep going. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found it even so as the women had said, but him they saw not. Okay, 25. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, ought not the Messiah to have suffered these things, and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Right. Uh, and can we get um, Galatians 3, 28? Because... Uh, I think it's it's the last couple of verses because it says there's no male, no female, we're all one and Yahshua the Messiah. Because that's one of the things that the world has really scoffed at. And really, at this time, like um, the women in the Catholic Church, the nuns and everything are saying, we want to be, we want to be recognized, we want to be part of this. I mean, they're whatever. Mm -hmm. But the point is, from the beginning. Yahweh, Yahweh has has made a man with as soon as he resurrected, he showed himself unto male and female. You'll also see that there were women that were, um, I can't think of the names, that were with the groups. They were preaching the gospel also more correctly. So he did, he was not making a separation between the male and the female. Um, I'll begin at verse 26. Okay, thank you. For ye are all the children of Yahweh by faith in Yahshua the Messiah. For as many of you as have been immersed in the Messiah have put on the Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Yahshua the Messiah. And if ye be the Messiahs, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Okay, so you don't have to be, you know, it's, 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 it seems strange now that people are, are changing sexes in order to feel right within their, their bodies, you know, I, I'm, I'm trapped in the I'm trapped in this um, embodiment that was given to me from day one, not realizing that it's all acceptable to your heavenly father you you know it's like it doesn't matter if you're a male you can serve yahweh it doesn't matter if you're a female you can still serve yahweh that is your ultimate um what's purpose that's why you're here to find and know yahweh as he really is and actually exists so you don't have to be taking knives uh to your body you don't have to be uh what's the other word taking drugs you don't have to be trying to it's, it's kind of sad that they're stopping the change, the natural change that a child goes into going from, you know, an adolescent going from a child to an adult, you don't want to stop that purpose spiritually 
it's not so important to, to stop it physically because you're all one in Yahshua the Messiah. And you're going to be taking this thing off anyway, the, this physical body. It does, it's not going to last forever. You can tell it's not going to last forever. So anyway, um, that's, that's what, what I wanted to go through now. So you have a death, a burial, and a resurrection, and he's, he's let out by an angel, and um, that veil is taken out of the way, and then he's walking in um, among, his, uh, the, among the people in, in the home, and they're very glad to see him. So it says, AD 43, Mary, Mark, Jerusalem. So can we just read Acts 12, 12 through 17? Acts 12, 12 through 17, 12 through 17. And when he had considered the thing, he came to the house of Miriam, the mother of John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. And as Peter knocked at the door of the gate, a damsel came to the hearken named Rhoda. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness but ran in and told how Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her, Thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. Then said they, It is his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. But he beckoning unto them with the hand to hold their peace, declared unto them how the angel of Yahweh had brought him out of the prison. And he said, go, show these things unto James and to the brethren. And he departed and went into another place. Now, as soon as it was day, there was no small stir among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. Keep reading. Yeah, that's, where are you, 17? I'm at 18. Okay. Um, yeah. Could you pick it up a little bit uh, with Herod again? Pick it up to like uh, 19, I guess. Yeah, 19. 19. And when Herod had thought for him and found him not, he examined the guards and commanded that they should be put to death. And he went down from Judea to Caesarea and there abode. And Herod was highly displeased with them. Oh, oh, yes. So what happens with Herod, his name means, I look it up, it means heroic. And the same thing that happened to the other Herod before, it's like, shouldn't there be a savior coming at the time of Yahshua's birth? And they say, yeah, he should be coming. And these wise men come and he was all upset and everything. And he says, well, you know, well, after you, after you finish, um, uh, you know, praising him, come back and see me. And Yahweh let them know, like, don't go back and see him. And so he was very uh, angry, and he just started having people killed, that they didn't come back and show him where this child was. And here he's being disappointed again. And then you see that Yahweh's gonna, Yahweh has him killed. He, he takes him out. He's taken on Yahweh's glory. Uh, let's, let's read it, please. Verse 21. And upon... A set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel, sat upon oh, his throne. Oh, okay, can we start from 20? Sure. Verse 20. And Herod was highly displeased with them of Tyre and Sidon. But they came with one accord to him. And having made Blastus, the king's chamberlain, their friend, desired peace, because their country was nourished by the king's country. And upon a set day, Herod arrayed in royal apparel sat upon his throne and made an oration unto them. And the people gave a shout saying, it is the voice of a deity and not of a man. And immediately the angel of Yahweh smote him because he gave not Yahweh the glory and he was eaten of worms and died. Yeah, and so, so he's trying to take Yahweh's glory. He's saying, I am people, I will, I will be like the most high and Yahweh takes them out. Okay, so then we're looking at here. Um, can we, um, Peter is, is talking to them and tell them, what, tell them what happened to them and they're astonished, they're pleased and everything. And then in the most holy place 
it's showing forth unity. So can we read Psalms 133 and 1? Psalms 133 and 1. I'm getting there. 36. 133 and 1 of Psalms says, Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, wait, a like, mm -hmm. wait a moment. Wait a I made a mistake. It's there is a council at at Jerusalem, Acts 15, 4 through 17. So can we get that, please? Gotcha. Acts 15 and 4. Okay. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the congregation and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that Yahweh had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us, that the nations by my mouth should hear the word of the glad tidings and believe. And Yahweh, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit, even as he did unto us. Right. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye Yahweh to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? So you can just see that that law was was hard on them. It was it was it was difficult. It was a, a yoke on them. And can we get real fast um, Genesis 12, 1 through 3? Genesis 12 and 1. 12 and 1 says, Now Yahweh has said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curses thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So the so through this, so through this death, burial, and resurrection with the spirit being poured out going to the the gentiles at cornelius's house and seeing them receive the holy spirit without having to go through the the hardship of the law he's seeing that what, what we're seeing that all the way back in galatians that in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed so the question is well do they have to go through what we went through being that we had to go through a, a physical natural law we had to be circumcised and everything is that is that true also for the Gentiles? I think that they should be going on to that too. And Peter is saying, well, no, that's not true. So can we go back to Acts 12 and where were we? I mean, 15 and 10. Acts 15 and 10. Now, therefore, why tempt you? you know what? I'm sorry, let's pick it up at seven. I'm, I'm, let's pick it up at seven. Let's Verse make seven. it clear, okay. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago Yahweh made choice among us, that the nations by my mouth should hear the word of the, go the gospel and believe. Right. And Yahweh, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Spirit even as he did unto us mm -hmm. and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye Yahweh to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Right. Keep but reading. We, 
but we believe that through the grace of Yahshua the Messiah, we shall be saved, even as they. Mm -hmm. So it's it's grace through it's grace. They receive grace and they receive faith from Yahweh. And we're reading to seventeen. Please read. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Saul, declaring what miracles and wonders Yahweh had wrought among the nations by them. Mm -hmm. And after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon Peter had declared how Yahweh first proposed to take out from among the nations the people of his name. And to this degree, to this agree, the words of the prophets as it is written, in that day I will raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build as in the days of old, all the nations called by my name, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and the heathen nations saith Yahweh who doeth this. Can we read that? Are you reading the, the King James? I can read the King James. Yeah, can we read that with the King James, please? Okay. Verse from 13, 11, please. 13. Okay. Mm -hmm. After they had be after they had held their peace, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simon hath declared how Elohim at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And to his agree, and to this agree, the words of the prophets as it is written, mm -hmm. after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down. And I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up that the residue of men might seek after Yahweh and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith Yahweh Elohim, who doeth all these things. Known unto Yahweh are all his works from the beginning of the world. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Yahweh. But okay, so they were, okay, so they were, we were supposed to read till 17. So we was talking about, I have a question here, and maybe someone can help me. It says, at the first, they visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. That was, okay, so is he talking about Abraham? Because, you know, declared how Yahweh, okay, I got a question. At the first, they visited the Gentiles to take out of them to a people for his name. So Yahweh set up a people starting right with Abraham. It wasn't his mother and father and everybody else. Abraham, you you come after me. I'm going to make a special people. And then in in um, Genesis the 12th chapter, um, he's talking about um, that the whole world is going to be blessed with them. When you come with Moses, Moses in fact gives them a law. Abraham had the circumcision, but Moses has has a law that makes them a special people. They were supposed to be as the lights of the world, the Jews, that you would know the majesty of Yahweh by the way they acted. And then when Yahshua comes in and fulfills that law, takes that, that physical natural law off the people, then the gospel is spread seven years later for the Jew and the Gentile, and they receive the spirit of Yahweh operating in their hearts and minds. They, they receive the light of the world. They, they receive the light. They receive the, the bread of the gospel. They understand that Yahshua is their intercessor and, and Peter, a stone or a rock, he's the one that's sent. And then this is showing that there's in the most holy place that it's a unity um, between Jew and Gentile through grace is received, faith is given, grace is received, we're one in Yahshua the Messiah. And can we also read 1 Corinthians 12 and 13? 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jew or Gentile, 
whether we be bond or free and have made and have been and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So that, that's what's bringing us all together. That's what's bringing us one, the Holy Spirit operating, operating in our hearts and minds through witnesses. And they had to have the Jew among them for them to understand the law and the prophets because that, that wasn't necessarily their book. So when they when they when they're coming to an understanding, the Jew among them is so well. This is what happened to Abraham. This is what happened to Noah. So you can see a death and a burial and a resurrection. And, um, that we had to with with the Passover, we had to take of that lamb. That lamb was pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. Um, um, the lamb was buried in us. Uh, Yahshua buried in this tomb. We resurrected into a, a new land where we were set free. He's, um, he's resurrected. He's and then he can make the world free, world free by believing in him. So they needed the Jew among them. So it's the Jew and the Gentile coming together, and that's the way they can praise Yahshua. Um, um, if anybody has any questions, I will be happy to. Um, address them but that's that's what i was looking at resurrection reconfirmed and as a matter of fact every time we learn something it's a resurrection reconfirmed hallelujah and and uh dr allen that that was that was very good and i was looking in the bottom of the plate here where it says ad 43 that was one time period right above resurrection of Yahshua reconfirmed. Right. And you see AD 43, and then you see that arrow pointing to the door. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you see AD 52, the council at Jerusalem, right? So look at that time period in there. You had you had a couple of things that that pointed to, which uh, in other words, that door was open unto like say on on one side you're talking about uh you have the you have the at at that time uh in in acts the 15th chapter when the council was trying to say that the gentiles had to be circumcised and everything right and that uh letting them know said no that was not so after that death burial and resurrection like you said that was no longer necessary, and it was never given to the Gentiles in the first place. I know. Thank so you. Uh, that's a looking at that period of time there, which is the same thing when you go over to um, it, it, and we don't have to get it, but when you look at the Moses chart and you see that that time before the Messiah's death uh, on Mount Tabor, when Peter, James, and John. Like right here, you see Mount of Transfiguration, mm -hmm. AD 30, yeah. a, AD 32, Mount Tabor. Right here. Right. And then on the other side of it, you see AD 33, Olivet. And you see it in the same place. Wait a moment. Where's Olivet? On the other side of the same cloud, right there where you're pointing. Underneath, right? See, he he ascended oh, okay. from Mount. Yeah. He ascended from Mount Olivet. Oh, okay. And see where it says ascension right there? Right above right above AD 30. Oh, right here. Ascension. Yeah. And so okay. now look at the look at and and now you see you see those those dashes there. And that comes down. See after he ascends, and then Sunrise. 10 days later, that shows you that that's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Right. Sunrise. See? Yeah. Right. So it's the same. You got that same principle over there in your chart because they're reminding them. See, that's that's the reconfirmation once again that he is risen. He's risen. Yes, indeed. That's why you have uh, on back to your your plate. Thirty five. It says resurrection reconfirmed. You know, he's he is risen. Uh, and you were saying. Rhoda means rose. Yes. Okay. Isn't isn't the Messiah the rose of Sharon? 
All right. Yeah, so somebody we, said we, he we, rose we, and he's sharing. Hello. So that's just hallelujah. Just wanted to share that with you, Doc. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'd like to say something, make a comment. Uh, that was good, uh, uh, Dr. Van Hook. <laughs> um, I was um, just, <laughs> I was looking at the, the chart that Dr. David Underwood sent me. Oh, that was a beautiful gift and I'm enjoying it. And um, I'm looking at the chart and following what Dr. Lenore Allen was saying. And as I'm looking at the chart, uh, which uh, says resurrection reconfirmed mm -hmm. and also looking at the tabernacle pattern. Now I'm going basic. Uh, that tabernacle pattern as we have been taught is the key of right. knowledge. And so when I look at your plate, uh, plate 35, I'm okay. seeing it and it is an upward um, operation I'm seen in the court roundabout what you, where you worked with the scripture, Acts 12 chapter. I'm seeing Peter's resurrection from prison in, in Judea or Judea, AD 43, reconfirmed yeah. Yahshua's resurrection in AD 33. And right. as I said, you dealt with that Acts 12 chapter. Now that's in the court roundabout of the pattern and and as i said it's an up as you said to it's an upward operation so now when we go to the holy place in that holy place there it says peter peter and council at, Jer at jerusalem which was 8052 and in that plate, it has Acts 15, chapter 4, to verse 4 through 17. You talked about that, too. Mar and then it says, Mary Mark at Jerusalem, AD 43. Mm -hmm. And that's Acts 12, chapter 12 through 17. I'm going over this uh, really for our new students, uh, just to let them know that we have been taught about the tabernacle pattern and it really is the key of knowledge. So these plates, you've got to see it going by the pattern, which is the, in this case, it's the upward operation. It's the uh, court roundabout, you're going up, court roundabout, holy place, most holy place. So right. where I just cited, where I just cited the scripture, Acts 15 chapter, verse four through 17, which you talked about, or it was talked about, um, uh, we're in the holy place. Now, continuing that upward operation, we see in the most holy place, it says uh, the New Testament written in the heart and mind, which is heaven open. And we see the scriptures there, Psalms 133, verse 1, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. Mm -hmm. And it says beginning and ending. So um, I just wanted to uh, bring those points out. Um, as I said, for our newer students, if we have any on the call. And that's my comment as far as the operation and showing the most holy place i mean the court roundabout the holy place and the most holy place and the upward operation yeah and, Thank and you. i i always like to see the simplicity of it and i just like that you can see here that in the holy place you're looking for light you're looking for bread you're looking for intercession through the gospel, they're saying that Yahshua, he is the light of the world. They're eating of his words. The words I speak, they are spirit and they light and they are life. So it's like bread onto them. It's like nourishment onto them for their soul. And they're, they're being instructed that Yahshua, he's the intercessor. 
Yahshua is salvation. So you can see these things here in a spiritual realm. And then when you go up into the most holy place, you have one piece of furnishing, um, the two angels and the mercy seat. And it's like, um, and Yahweh dwelling in the midst. So I and my father are one and they're bring, being brought together as one. It was an angel that was leading um, Peter. And, and and when he comes to the door and she says, oh, he's here. It's like, ah, that's just an angel. So they're, fa they're familiar with angels. So the angel and man are being brought together serving Yahshua the Messiah. Yeah, yeah and, and Doc, what's so beautiful about that is, again, when you see AD 43, you see that, that you see that arrow pointing to the door. Right. You see? And then when you look on the other side, you have that arrow pointing up, showing you Peter. So again, you have a twofold operation there and you, you're almost 10 years apart. Isn't that beautiful? In both cases, because mm -hmm. Peter was before the council at Jerusalem speaking, but he was also at that door of the, the, the door of Mary. I think that's, that, that might've mm -hmm. been uh, John Mark's house. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's just, I, I tell you this, you, you cannot exhaust this. No, there's no exhausting. it. so it's so beautiful. Thank you, doc. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to turn this over to our facilitator, Dr. Frank and Valerie Lewis of Springfield, Ohio. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. If you have any corrections, you could throw it in there. Well, there's not. Uh, uh, well, if you look, uh, since she was talking about the door, you ought to read uh, Acts 14, 27. Um, because that that's right before 15, where they said you had to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. So that was a council that they had that took the Holy Spirit to show them that, no, uh, we're not going to uh, put that burden on the Gentiles. And it, is, and it is right. He died, buried, resurrected at 33. Yahshua Messiah did. And so 10 years later, exactly, you see it reconfirmed with Peter. Uh, so go, what you got there? Acts 14 and 27. Mm -hmm. And when they were come and had gathered the assembly together, they rehearsed all that Yahweh Elohim had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. Okay. So you see him open up the door of faith to the Gentiles. That's how the Gentiles are grafted in is through faith or through the gospel being preached. Same gospel. Then you have the 15th chapter. That's when they have the council. Uh, it didn't have the scripture, but you ought to read it just to rehearse it. Uh, 15, uh, 24 and come down. Acts 15, 24. For as much as we have heard as certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying, you must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. So now you see how uh, at the beginning of the age, there were certain going out there preaching to the uh, Gentiles and preaching to the, uh, to the Jews uh, that uh, the Gentiles had to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses. Right. And they subverted their souls. Now, that means they overturned uh, what was taught to them before, how that uh, uh, those things aren't required now. They're grafted in by faith. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so now you see how that's what's happened at the end of our age, how people have subverted. And also the souls of people by telling them that the way they were first taught was wrong. Uh, oh, yes. You know, and, and I will say this, the door of faith to the Gentiles. Well, the, they were in the fourth age where the Holy Spirit's poured out and that the fourth step of the pattern. That's where the anointing oil was. Uh, I mean, that's where the high priest was anointed with oil at the door. So now he's opened up the door of faith. So now the Holy Spirit's being poured out in this age uh, by the preaching of the gospel and then 
and the people, the souls believing it. See, okay, uh, keep reading. It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Saul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah. We have sent therefore Judah and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. Now they hazard their lives. You know, do you ever listen to that? I mean, Dr. Kinley gives that testimony how that... Uh, uh, he was beat up at 906 Hopkins Street or something like that in Cincinnati. Uh, see, he ha has his lies for the gospel. He said, and he, even when they beat him up and messed him up and kicked him around, uh, 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 he, 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 he locked it. He said, they said, you can leave now. He said, I ain't leaving. <laughs> he asked them where their place was. And, uh, well, you know, and he said, I'll come, I'll come, you'll come and you'll come to our place after we done done this to you. He said, sure, you don't know no better. <laughs> but anyway, uh, uh, okay, go, uh, read on. We have sent therefore Judah and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from foods offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fear you. Now, now see, if there would have ever been a time for them to say, yep, you have to be water baptized to join the join the spiritual body you have to eat lord's suppers you have to uh pay tithes and offerings it would have been right there and uh and and you guess you have to keep the law of moses and yeah you got to keep the ten commandments and he didn't they didn't say none of that mm -hmm. so it's showing you uh uh and and see i was 19 years after or 19, 18 years after the Savior poured out the Holy Spirit, 19 years after his death. Then to reconfirm, I didn't put it in this thing, but uh, you can't put everything on, on in each plate. Uh, to reconfirm that, the next chapter is, uh, and, and you'll read you'll read at the beginning of 16. He says, you know, you don't have to be, you don't circumcise the gentle, you don't have to do that. Well, he circumcised Timothy at the beginning of the 16th chapter because he knew the Jews wouldn't listen to him. Okay, but but uh, he goes to Philippi, which is Philippians. That's where the flip, you know, he's going there and he converts people and they get mad and beat him up and threw him in prison. This is Paul and Silas. This is 10 more years. See where he reconfirmed at 43 from 33 when Joshua died, very resurrected Peter. Uh, goes to prison and, and you know james is killed that's a death peter's put in prison that's a burial then he resurrects see? it's showing a death burial resurrection 10 years later well here's paul and silas this is 1625 of acts this is another 10 years reconfirming the death Six burial resurrection of joshua Acts 1625 and at midnight Saul and Silas prayed. I guess you better read 24. 24. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the socks. So now there, so that's Pete, that's Paul and Silas thrown into prison mm -hmm. uh, and made their feet fast in the stocks. Read. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto well, I think you better read earlier there, because uh, he talked about them being beat up and whipped. You understand? Uh, uh, I don't know where that is. Uh, hmm. Well, it could be just right before they put him in prison. <laughs> uh, just because, like, didn't they whip Joshua? You know, so he repeats these things. Uh, oh, there it is, 22 there. Verse 22. Because really what happened is he, 
they they converted this one lady who who was uh Lydia well yeah and there was another one uh I think whoever the one lady was that would they got much money uh now he did have Lydia but later on was another woman being uh uh say that yeah that certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us and brought her masters much gain oh no you What's ought to read, read 16 17. 16 17. the same the same followed paul and us and cried singing these are the servants of the most high el which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did that. Oh, it's, and it's this, 16. Huh? 16 sent down for the spirit of divination for her master's much gain by Susan. Okay. Yeah. So they're, making, read that. they're making money. Yeah. And then when, uh, then they said, well, hey, these men are the servants of the most high Elohim, which showed unto us the way of salvation. Read. 18. Yeah. 18 and this did and this did she many days but paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit i command thee in the name of yahshua the messiah to come out of her and he came out of at out the same hour and when there and when her master saw that the hope of their gain was gone they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into a marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city. Right. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And you know, when you go in there preaching Yahweh on Yahshua and he wasn't born on December 25th <laughs> and you don't have to be water baptized and eat the Lord's suppers and pay preachers your tithes and offering. They get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Read on. Wow. Matter of and fact, when we were in Zambia, that put out, we went to the marketplace and preached. We put the charts up there and preached to them people. Hmm. And we were going against the Sabbath. And they went downtown and said, you all can't uh, operate your class uh on sunday or that guy will be thrown in jail hmm. uh, you can't teach them things because that market was a seven day adventist market we did that on friday but uh but it came down to it that uh uh charles well anyway we did preach on sunday <laughs> it didn't stop us <laughs> read on but you're thrown it in jail the power of this teaching you understand uh, just talking to them and preaching to them that uh, the way they've been taught is wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't realize how powerful that is, you know? Right. Uh, it's a good thing they didn't beat you up. <laughs> Read <laughs> on. 21. And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe, being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them. And the magistrate rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the socks. And at Please. midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang prisons and sang praises unto Yahweh, and their prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands was loose. Now you see that? Uh, now that happened. Uh... Well, of course, that happened when Yahshua Messiah resurrected. <laughs> he resurrected all those souls that believed it on him. So, and but they were, but he, oh, you might as well read that. Uh, read First Peter three and maybe start at uh, eighteen. 
first Peter and it's three. also a confirmation of uh isaiah 61 and one Go ahead. first peter 3 and 18 for the messiah also hath once suffered for sin the just or the unjust that he might be Yahweh being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. See, he's preaching the death, burial, resurrection again. Okay. Uh, he once suffered for the sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to Yahweh, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the spirit. It's a death, burial, resurrection. Read. I well, wait. he ain't resurrected yet. He, he died and buried. Okay, we'll say it that way. But the spirit went... This is what happened after, uh, go, read, go ahead and read that. Verse 19, by which also he preached unto the spirits in prison. So now see, they were spirits which were in prison because they couldn't resurrect on their own. It takes Yahshua Messiah to resurrect them. So you see how these guys thrown in prison is reconfirming the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua. See, uh, and... Uh, well, you might as well read that at Isaiah 61 there. Okay. Isaiah 61 and 1. Mm -hmm. right. And just like the children of Israel down there in Egypt, they were in bondage. It was like being in prison. You understand? When you're when you a slave, see, he, de he delivered them by death, burial, resurrection to show that Yahshua, man, was in spiritual bondage and it takes him to resurrect them. Read. Isaiah 61, 1, the spirit of Yahweh Elohim is upon me because Yahweh hath anointed me to preach good, preach the gospel unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim, hmm, proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Now you see that? So Yahshua Messiah did that. The uh, mankind was in bondage to death and sin, and it took Yahshua Messiah to die and take away the sin of the world and be buried. And when he resurrects, uh, he opened up the opening the prison uh, to them that are bound. They were bound uh, spiritually. See, he, he came to resurrect them uh, from the power of the devil. See, okay, <clears throat> go back to uh, so you see how this same prison thing is repeated in Acts. And it takes this vision of revelation to point that out. You don't have the world teaching you that, do they? So, so here's, this is AD 53, which is 10 years after the 43. And that's when uh, Paul and Silas are in prison there. Okay, so it's reconfirming again the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua. So we're back there at 1620. Uh, so it said there's a great earthquake. Wasn't there an earthquake when Yahshua Messiah resurrected? Yeah. It said the rocks rent. Well, you might as well. Well, we've already, you're familiar. Well, we repeat things. Get Matthew 20, 27, 51. Matthew 27 and 51. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in twain, or was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake and the rocks broke and the graves were opened and many bodies of the sons which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now I see that earthquake and you see the resurrection of those souls after his resurrection, they resurrected after his res resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared on the men. Okay, now go back to the 16, where are we at, 27 or 28? 27, 16 and 27. And the keeper of the prison awakened out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Now that's something when you have, you're in prison and there's an earthquake and the doors open up and your shackles don't fall off of you and, and everybody's still sitting there. 
you ain't running away. Hmm. <laughs> so, so that guy, the keeper of the prison, he's ready to kill himself. You understand? And, and Paul said, don't do it. We're all here. And then it says, then he called for a light. Don't you have in the resurrection or don't you have in, uh, well, like she said, you go into the holy place, you got a light there, don't you? Okay, read on. But Paul cried with a loud voice saying, do thyself no harm, we are all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Now, see, this, here's, here's the question he's asking. He knows there's something miraculous just happened. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's saying, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And here's the answer. Read. And they said, believe on Yahshua the Messiah, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. You see that? So believe in Yahshua Messiah, that's how you're saved. Okay. And you can read on from that. But the, no, so the thing, the point is, that's 10 more years after. So that's the resurrection reconfirmed after the Peter resurrection, mm -hmm. reconfirmed the resurrection of Yahshua Messiah. So he died at death burial resurrection at 33 yash and messiah did then peter's the re reconfirmation record you know he, it's reconfirmed at 43 and here's paul reconform uh reconfirmed at 53 see that uh, and then really like was said earlier that's what happened to us we were imprisoned to all kind of false doctrine Yes. And it took this great divine vision revelation and the gospel being preached by the Holy Spirit, Yahshua and Messiah. That's what can turn you around and get you out of that prison, that spiritual prison state of being uh, shackled by false doctrine and ideas and, mm -hmm. and the lies of the world. You know, see? Okay. Uh, Dr. Graciela shared that with us. This is from volume four, page 71. And it talks about uh, what we were just talking about in that, in that um, plate. 8041, 8043, 8052, 53, 66. It's all there. Thank you, Lenore. I was going to ask about that. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Underwood. I'm thanking both. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to mention that because I, I do associate it with that particular plate because the numbers are on the plate. And it, it was a reminder to us that um, the Roman Catholic Church tried to make Peter the Pope, but that uh, Dr. Kenley refuted that by showing us that that wasn't possible. So. Yeah, this is showing the, that Peter was never in Rome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, Pardon me, what page is that again? 71. Thank you. But the 53 doesn't show Paul's resurrection there, but, uh, but it still has a 53 there, yeah? Okay. Um, well, um uh, we don't have much time but uh phyllis do you want to get started with plate number 36 and then continue on the next time we go over it okay dr jean burris is gonna start okay okay so plate number uh dr jean burris robinson is gonna do plate number 36 or start yes uh, Phyllis was kind enough uh, when I asked to do the plate because I like to be uh, able to uh, share my little thoughts. Uh, she allowed me to join her in doing the plate. Now, um, on the 40 plate chart I see on the tablet here, it's 
giving the title as First John 5, 7 through 8. Now that's different than what I have on my chart, my forty plate chart, which says the record in heaven, the witness on earth. So um, perhaps I can just ask uh, a reader to read that First John 5, 7 through 8, and then let's see where I go from there. First John 5 and 7. But there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. And there Thank are three. Thank you. That's that's oh you didn't finish. I'm sorry. Eighth verse. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. Okay. Thank you again. Um, I appreciate that. What my intent is at this moment is to um, read from the textbook, uh, volume one, what Dr. Kinley speaks of and starting on page 27 of uh, the paragraph that says Yahweh is pure spirit or Yahweh is all in all. Now, if you all will tolerate me, I would like to read and then ask the readers to help me with the scriptures, is that okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So starting with Yahweh is pure spirit or Yahweh is all in all, written by Dr. Henry C. Kinley. In as much as we seek and desire to explain and show our concept and understanding of what Yahweh Elohim is, what, where, when, and how he created or formed the angelic host and the heaven and earth. It is also necessary that we produce sufficient concrete evidence that our concept is both spiritually and scientifically verified by other witnesses. That's scripturally and scientifically, Dr. Burris. Scripturally. Not yes, scripturally. I said scripturally and scientifically verified by other witnesses. Now, if my speech it's difficult to understand. Somebody can can let me know that. I uh, I realize. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. I'm trying to find the um thing. I'm slow. Sorry. Um, we have pro previously propounded to some extent that Yahweh is all in all. Um, we can use the uh, uh, Moses chart if uh, someone would, if you're able to pull that up. Okay, 
thank you. Uh, series number one, Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. Yahweh is spirit, manifested, manifesting within the cloud, symbolized by eternity. So we're going to talk about that um, eternity and what um, comes next from Dr. Kennelly is in the accompanying illustration, unity part one and eternity, which are pages 31 and 32 in the textbook. Uh, are you able to put them side by side, Lenore? What would you like? Are you able to put up uh, uh, the pages from the textbook 31 and 32 and put them side by side? Is that possible? No, I'm I'm sorry. No, I can show no. you 31, then I can show you 32. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Let, I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. I, I can't do any of that. So I'm just asking. <laughs> um, so I'll reread that in the accompanying illustration page. 31, the author intends to show and prove the existence of Yahweh. Yahweh first existed into totality as pure spirit. Now, uh, one of the readers, if you'll read uh, John, Four and twenty-four. John four and twenty-four. Yeah. Four, four and twenty-four. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Dr. Kelly goes on to say. Yahweh is the ultimate source, infinite and immaculate substance, the incomprehensible and inscrutable principle, the all and all, and eternal, independent, self-existing deity without visible shape or form. Someone please read Deuteronomy 4 and 12, and then John 5 and 37. Deuteronomy 4 and 12. And Yahweh spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude only you heard a voice. John 5 and 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Dr. Kenley goes on to say, therefore, he is within himself the sum total embodiment of all of the attributes of and uh, this can be seen on page 32 of volume one. 
the attributes of intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. He is the limit and bounds, the source and substance. Yahweh is the terminus ad quim and terminus ad quo. Now, Dr. Kinley goes on on page 27 to start to explain hello him. Uh, before I get that, I would like to have one of the readers read um, Proverbs 8 and 22. Proverbs 8 and 22. Mm -hmm. Yahweh possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, wherever the earth was. When there was no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world, when he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the deep, or the depth, when he established the cloud above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him, as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, mm -hmm. rejoicing in the, in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. This is um, purportedly written by Psalm. Now, uh, I got that from the uh, uh, Bible, the Schofield Study Bible. But yeah, Dr. Kinley states next in the illustration of the unity uh, part two. And hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've lost track. Hold on a sec. Uh, uh, okay. No, two. Take Next. In the, huh? Take your time. You're doing great. Next in the Illustration Unity Part Two and Super Incorporeal Form. Uh, we are showing how that Yahweh, by the process of transmutation, took on super incorporeal form in part, not in totality, before he began to create eight, the angelic host. After the physical creation, Yahweh in his super incorporeal form, which is Elohim, was seen by Moses and the prophets in visions and communicated with them. Uh, Lenore, is it possible to put the uh, uh, mm. 
forgive me. The uh, Moses chart. Yes, thank you. Back uh, so that we can sh show where Moses had the vision and saw Elohim as he had come from Yahweh. Uh, with one of the readers read Exodus 24, 9 and 10. Exodus Next went out Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel. And there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work of a sapphire stone, and as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. That was verse. Okay. Would you read just a little further for me? Yes, ma'am. And upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw Elohim and did eat and drink. Thank you. In this condition, he was the universal archetype pattern of everything, incorporeal and physical, that he thereafter created. Someone please read Revelation 3.14 for me. Revelations 3 and 14. And unto the messenger of the assembly of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the I am, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yahweh. Thank you. In the illustration in corporeal form on page 34. We mean that in the realm of eternity, he created the spirit beings or the angelic host first before he created the physical creation. Angels are ministering spirits created to serve, honor, obey, and glorify Yahweh. Uh, would someone read Daniel 3.28? Daniel 3.28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be Yahweh Elohim of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who have sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yield their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any Elohim except their own Elohim. Also, Daniel 7 and 27. 7 and 27 of Daniel. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the sons of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Also, uh, Dr. Kinley has here Luke 1 and 19 and Hebrews 1 and 14. Luke 1 and 19. And the angel answering said unto him, I am Gabriel that stand in the presence of Yahweh. And I am sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Hebrews 1 and 14. 
and they are not all are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Then he goes on to discuss Lucifer. He writes, Lucifer, an angelic spirit creature, the son of the morning because of his great beauty and wisdom, where with Elohim had created him, lifted himself up or rebelled against Yahweh. This caused a rebellion in heaven among the angels. And therefore, Lucifer and his host were found guilty before Elohim and were cast out of heaven into the ethereal darkness that surrounded the earth after the beginning of the physical creation. This was the origin of Satan, the evil spirit creature. Then for number three on our uh, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh, our Elohim and Yahweh unity uh, description on page 31, part three. Finally, Elohim manifested in physical form of man and the creation. He writes, finally, in the illustration, unity, part three, and concrete form, uh, pages 31 and on page 35. Elohim took on physical shape and form in parts, not in totality, manifesting in the material creation. First John five and twenty. First John five and twenty. And we know that the Son of Yahweh has is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true. And we are in him that is true, even in his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. This is the true Elohim and eternal life. Mm -hmm. To summarize, as heretofore explained, this downward operation of process as indicated in the unity and that starting at the most holy place shows Yahweh in part, not in totality, coming from pure spirit, which is his in conceivable and incomprehensible state of existence through superincorporeal form and then into materialization of spirit in physical bodily form of Yahshua and the material creation. Now, according to his purpose, as indicated in unity that was shown on page 31, there is a similar upward process from materialization returning back through incorporealization or incorporeal form to pure spirit manifesting his purpose 
to mankind to make a new creation and a new creature in Yahshua, the Messiah. Please read 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in the Messiah, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Thank you so much for all of your assistance. I didn't have time to go through each of the uh, scriptures that are written in plate 36, the holy place. But it says here that three bear record in heaven. And that is the unity of the spirit. And I will allow uh, Dr. McCoy to pick up where I left off. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Absolutely beautiful. Sure was. Thank you. It was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, bless Yahshua. Or Yahshua bless us. Thank you. Yes, right. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there's only two minutes left. So I suppose this will be a part two. But what I can say is that um, I really appreciate you, Dr. Burris Robinson, to uh, let you know that you truly did that so eloquently and beautifully, um, and you made it a round trip. And that's exactly what that was. <laughs> so I'm appreciative of what I heard and uh, glean from what you said. And um, prayerfully, I will be able to do the same uh, as far as edifying the body with this plate when it's my turn to expound on plate number 36. And thank you, uh, Dr. McCoy. Uh, as I said, uh, there was more I wish to offer. So. When you do, if you want to pick up there in the most holy place where I left off, feel free to do so. Again, I thank everybody for their participation. Yes, ma'am. No problem. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wanted to know if it would be possible to continue on this with Tuesday since um, I haven't really sent out another transcript. Could we do it on Tuesday or do people are against that idea? Tuesday would be fine with me. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Also, Dr. Sybil Lewis had requested that people who had gone to Chicago give testimonies. Yeah, I would love I to hear the testimonies from Chicago yeah. as well. well. Okay, that could be a Tuesday thing too. Yeah. Yeah, the fact yep, yep, that yep. you only the fact that you only have a few more plates left, it would probably be better to finish that first and then go into the testimonies. This is just uh, you know, a suggestion since yes. we're so close to the end of the 40 plates. Yeah, and does anybody know what who has the next the 37, 38? Yes, I have 37. Okay, so that's Dr. Pratt. We know who has 38? Yes, I had emailed you Kamala and Dr. Perry, Lewis. Uh, has 38 and 39's Connor Meserly and uh, 40 is uh, Pandora Andrews. And Lenore oh. Allen says. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Yeah. It does. And it's done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
Thank you. That concludes our class today. We thank all participants uh, for coming out to study with us. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. in Malaysia, and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in London, England. Our doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Mm -hmm. To the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power before, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Beautiful you. class. Yes, indeed. Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes, beautiful discourse, Dr. Robinson. Very Absolutely. enjoyable. Very edifying. Absolutely. Thank you yes, so much. Right. I appreciate right. all of you. Uh, it helps keep me helps keep me going it helps to give me something to look forward to uh weekly so i appreciate everybody and, and all thanks be to yashua um, we appreciate your diligence and love dr robinson yes indeed yes, yes. ma'am